Uh, it was such a bad job at the time. They hadn't had a winning season in over a decade. Uh, the head coaching job, I was making mm. about $30,000 as an assistant coach. The head coaching job at Eastern Florida at the time, which then was called Brevard Community College, was only $10,000 for a head coaching spot. Oh, you know, wow. Nobody wanted the job. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Silas Adeki, and I am very excited to have on the show today someone who is uh, incredible, someone who has poured into many other young men, someone who has paved way for a lot of people uh, who never had opportunity, someone who has been through a lot of tremendous adversity. Um, this person is a eight-time college uh, conference coach of the year and has won nine nine straight conference championship, correct? Actually, it was, nine straight? It was a portion of the three just ended this year, but it was 10 straight. 10? Yeah. 10 straight? Yeah, 10 straight. 10 straight <laughs> conference champion and was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. I won't let, I won't steal his thunder. I will let him introduce himself. And here you go, coach. I uh, appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm Jeremy Shulman. I'm the head basketball coach at Eastern Florida State College. It is my 13th year. As as Silas said, I've been the conference coach of the year eight times. We've won 10 conference championships in a row until this year. Uh, we've made the state final four for the last five years. We've had five trips to the national tournament. Uh, and it's because of guys like Silas who, who played for me. Uh, unbelievable person, unbelievable character, and a fantastic player as well. So, Appreciate you having me on. This this is uh, something I've been excited about all week. Yeah, very excited. I will just uh, briefly start with um, this question, Coach. Um, you know, I'm very excited to have you on the on, on the show. Uh, you you've impacted a lot of young lives and and helped a lot of kids um, stay in the right direction of their life. Um, how did you get into coaching? <laughs> it was funny. Uh, I've been coaching for a long time. I don't feel very old, but I've been coaching now for 26 years. I started in 97, 98. Um, I was a good high school player. I was not a great high school player. Uh, I was very small and, and very skinny back then. So I knew I was never going to make it, uh, you know, as a pro. Uh, obviously, I didn't know I was going to end up being 6'9", 220. <laughs> but uh, got into coaching early for that reason. Uh, always had a passion for coaching. Uh, always had a uh, passion for basketball in general. And so a long time ago, got into coaching. I started my own AAU program at, at 17 years old, uh, 17, 18 years old, and just uh, uh, got into it back then and uh, and just fell in love with coaching and, and wanted to cultivate my craft over the years. And after 10 years of coaching and running my own AAU program, got into college coaching, uh, did three years as an assistant coach at East Mississippi Community College under Mark White. Uh, and then was fortunate enough to get the head coaching job here. And of course, 13 years here at Eastern Florida. So uh, quite a long time coaching. Wow. I've loved every bit of it. So, You see, I never knew. I never knew you started coaching at 17. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what was I doing when I was 17? I was probably, I was probably on the verge of, you know, um, going to my first Division One school, uh, University of Evansville, when I was 17. But what kind of adversity did you come across at 17 for you to gather a team um the the, the kind of pressure that it takes for a 17 year old coach to organize and take all these kids to tournaments and you drop all the plays what kind of pressure did you have to deal with at the age of 17 when you started your coaching career well it's funny you know i look back on it and uh you know it, it, it probably should be a book it's uh, it's pretty humorous uh you know, when I first started you know, coaching, I'm recruiting at 17 years old for an AAU program. And, you know, back then in 97, 98, you know, AAU wasn't quite as prevalent as it is now. And so, you know, not everyone yeah. knew what AAU was. And there was only a couple of elite programs in every state. And we were trying to become one of the top three programs in the state, you know, one of the few travel programs that would go out of state. So I would go recruit. And you got to understand, at 17, I didn't look like this. I looked, I probably looked like I was about 13 years old. I look very young. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I, I just had, I didn't look at all like a coach. So here I am trying to talk to parents, asking them to let their 13 year old players, I was doing a 13 year old team at the time. I'm sorry, a 14 year old team at the time, 
asking them to, you know, send their 13 and 14 year old children with me on the road. And again, looking like I'm the same age as the kids, you know, it wasn't the easiest thing to, you know, convince, uh, you know, top players to come play AAU for me, but we, we got a good group, uh, you know, to get started. And, and we, we definitely had a lot of adversity that first year and learned a lot. And then by the second year, we, we really turned into a juggernaut by that second year, but, uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, to, to be a fly on the wall, listening to some of those conversations with players and parents, like, wait, what is AAU? Like, you're a coach, <laughs> like, like, well, you could take, you know, a, a team full of guys, your own age, you know, all the way to Knoxville for, for games or Chattanooga for games. It's like, so, uh, it was definitely an experience, but, uh, it, it definitely started the path that I'm on right now. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, man. Uh, so I would skip um, East Mississippi State. You know, um, your, your assistant coach coaching your East Mississippi State, and uh, I'm gonna move forward straight to um, Eastern Florida. Uh, what was what was the feeling like when you found out you got your first head coaching job at Eastern Florida? Uh, honestly, it was amazing. And I'd been in Mississippi for three years, and uh, when I mean small town Mississippi, it was. Uh, very small town. It was Scuba, Mississippi. There's only 600 people in the whole town outside of our college. Uh, so three years yeah. at East Mississippi was more than enough. So I was uh, not not just excited <laughs> to, you know, get out of Scuba, but to have the opportunity for a head coaching job. So when uh, Coach Jeff Carr, you know, who's the athletic director at, at Eastern Florida, when he called me, uh, I was I was a little shocked. I was very surprised. Uh, I was nervous. I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, to even have the opportunity in the first place. And uh, it was such a bad job at the time. They hadn't had a winning season in over a decade. Uh, the head coaching job, I was making mm. about $30,000 as an assistant coach. The head coaching job at Eastern Florida at the time, which then was called Brevard Community College, was only $10,000 for a head coaching spot. Oh, you know, wow. Nobody wanted the job. Uh, you know, it was a terrible job. We did not have a wood floor. You know, we had a rubber floor. I don't think you even knew that. We had a rubber tartan floor. Uh, it was just it was a rough job, which is why I had a chance to get it in the first place. But, you know, you hear people talk about betting on themselves, and I just wanted to bet on myself and give, give it the opportunity. And, uh, you know, took took the job. And, of course, for 10000 I I mean, I felt like I was going to pay $10 million. I mean, that that's how I approached the job. And it was just – couldn't wait to get started and was so excited and so enthusiastic about it. And so, uh, it was, you know, it didn't hurt that it was right here in Melbourne, Florida, which is kind of paradise. So, <laughs> but it was, uh, it, it was, a, it was, I'm very, very grateful and very thankful to coach Carr and Dr. Richie for giving me the opportunity in the first place. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people definitely miss out on the opportunity and, you know, your mindset and your optimism, led you to to bet on yourself and you were you had the opportunity uh to be able to turn a program that hasn't won a game in 10 season they haven't had a winning season in, in 10 season right yeah had not had a winning season in over 10 and seasons. you were able to turn that dang <laughs> and you were able to turn that type of program into one of the best junior colleges in the country and that is that is kudos to your you know your your effort your focus and you know the type of man you are right there uh I appreciate you it. know someone who's very competitive you 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 one of the most competitive coaches i've uh, ever played for and uh that's awesome man that's that's awesome to know so your um let me go to team 8 which yes. i was a part of yes um, yes. yes yeah Prior to prior to me joining Eastern Florida, you know, I, I went to Evansville University and I knew, you know, I was gonna transfer to another division one, but they had blocked all my offers, you know. Um so I was like, you know what? Why not go to um you know, go to JUCO? Yeah. The year before I I was offered the opportunity, you know, my high school coach, Jack Ferrer, said, Hey, instead of going to D one, why don't you go two years of JUCO? But I despised junior college so much because I thought it was for dumb kids. I was like, I got 4.0. What am I doing in junior college? Why should I have to go to junior college? Because the NCAA clearinghouse thinks I finished my curriculum too fast. So I was like, I'm being penalized for being smart. 
So I was like, why? I'm not going to go to junior college. So went to Evansville. But that was some that program didn't fit me well, so I was going to leave. But they didn't want me to leave because they thought I was one of their best players. They were doing everything to hold me down within the program. I ended up leaving. And I remember my first flight to, to Florida, you know, seeing you and uh, I believe uh, Coach Morosco, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was Coach Morosco. Yeah. yeah. What was your first thoughts when uh, – when when I first came down to Florida, <laughs> well, I was just so fired up. I was just so fired up. Uh, obviously, you know, Coach Zach is a friend of mine. I had known him for a while, and so I mean, he had already told me so much about you. Uh, he'd sent me a bunch of film. Uh, obviously, you had redshirted at Evansville, so I didn't have much from Evansville, but I went back and watched a bunch of stuff at Hamilton Heights and, and just loved your game. But you know, more than that, it was just meeting you in person and just just seeing the type of, of human being you are you know, the type of character you have. And uh, those were the things that resonated right away. You know, I don't know if you remember, but like at the moment, we didn't really need another big, you know, we, we had had a couple of guys returning. That wasn't the number one thing uh, that, that we really needed. But the moment I, it wasn't even about basketball. I mean, the moment I met you, it was like, man, I've got to have this guy in the family. We've got to have this guy in the family. I remember you stayed with me on your visit. You know, we didn't put you in a hotel. You yes. stayed with me here. You stayed in our spare bedroom uh, and just became family right away. And uh, it was just yes. kind of one of those, you know, matches that just, you just, it, it was made in heaven, man. It was just, you know, we're, we're just yes. so fortunate that our paths crossed. And obviously you, you beat out a lot of people, end up starting right away for us and had an unbelievable season. Uh, you know, I always, you know, I always use you as an example, even on the court as well. You know, we talk so much about you off the court, but yeah. on the court, mm -hmm. you know, you're a guy that, you know, didn't really, get a chance or an opportunity to shoot the ball from outside in high school or at Evansville. Uh, and you just developed and you worked and you bought into some of the stuff we were trying to teach. And, uh, you know, you shot over 40% from three for us. It's unbelievable. The kid yeah. was a big time sniper. Like, it was <laughs> un unbelievable. I mean, I've just got so many stories. I mean, we don't That's, have to uh, Shout out to uh, night school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You worked your time. ton of night school. Worked your tail off, worked your tail off. So uh, just, you know, you're just a heck of a person, but a heck of a player here and uh, uh, just, just amazing. So I mean, that, that first experience when you came on that visit was just, it was amazing. Yeah. So Team 8, in my opinion, arguably one of the most talented squad you've put together. Ahmed Ali, Mike Nuger, Ruth Mon Young, Shaw Carter, Eli Baev, Ezekiel Balogun, myself, Junior Madut, um, you know, <clears throat> Nate. And we had some guys that joined early and, and they had to leave. Um, what, how, how did you manage to handle all those talent and figure out, you know what, how am I going to? Because I know from, from the player's perspective, everyone wants to play. Yes. First yeah. of all, everyone wants to start and then everyone wants to play a lot of minutes. And I remember when I came in, you told me, listen, I already have returning starters. Yeah. I'm not promising you anything. And if I'm going to start, I have to earn my spot. And I was like, hey, coach, I don't expect to be handed anything. I'm, if, if I work my, my tail off and I earn the spot, then I earn the spot. And which which was the mindset I came in was to compete and, and beat out some guys and be able to get the opportunity to start, which I did. Yeah. But how were you able to manage? We had so much talent. Uh, what was going through your mind? Because I know no player has ever asked you this uh, off the court. Like, what was going through your mind? Like, hey, man, how am I going to play this, this, this? This guy needs more time. What's going on? Uh, what, what was the experience like for you? <laughs> well... It wasn't easy. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It was not easy. Uh, but what made it easier than some other teams is just such an enjoyable group to coach. You know, it would it, it, it just having having so much talent, having so many good people on the team. I um, mean, we faced our adversity, and you know it. You know, some of the stuff behind the scenes, and we faced our adversity. Yeah. But uh, it does make it easier when you have really good players, and it, it makes it easier when you have really good people. But um, I mean, there was yes. there were a lot of coaches meetings like how are we going to play everybody, you know, because especially in the front court, you know, because again, as, as we talked about a little, little while ago, we didn't really need another forward. You know, we didn't really need another forward. Like we had, 
you know, we had signed some guys, we had some returning guys, and we already had coming into it, we already had Shaq Hardy and Eli Abayev who were returning starters. All right, we already signed Root Mangyong, who, as you know, was just unbelievably talented. You know, we already had, you know, Easy Balagon. You know, we already had, um, you know, uh, Shaq Seville, Diesel. We had Diesel on the roster as well. Like yep, we had, Diesel. We yeah. had a deep front court. Uh, you know, when we brought you in, it's just such a no-brainer because of your character and personality, but I knew it was not going to be easy. And so, um, I mean, you kind of said it, it was going to be whoever earned it. You know, it, it's, I always yeah. tell you guys, it's, I'm, I don't determine playing time. You know, you guys do. You guys have to make me play. you. And whoever earns it, earns it. Whoever deserves it, deserves it. Whoever's going to win the most games, going to play the most minutes. And of course, you just, you know, elevated cream, cream of the crop, uh, cream to the top. And yeah. uh, it just... Uh, yeah. Uh, it was it was it, it was not always easy, but uh, being able to play you and Eli together, being able to bring off Shaq Carter off the bench, uh, and then just you know whether we want to rotate, you know, uh, you know, Root, we want to put an easy whoever else we want to put. Uh, it, it just made it easier, uh, you know, just having so much talent, and so many good guys on there. But it, it wasn't always smooth. Yeah, you know, it wasn't always smooth. Yes, yes. So. One of the things junior colleges usually deal with, and sometimes when people hear JUCO, JUCO, you know, people are thinking, man, like uh, really rough, uh, yeah. poor facilities, um, you know, stubborn kids, kids <laughs> with bad grades, probably kids that probably went to jail. You know, people think some of the wildest things is what they tell these kids in high school. Like, look, you go to a junior college, Man, you're gonna be teammates with guys that that have knives in their pocket. You think it's like a prison for college, and come to find out, when when I came to Eastern Florida State, you know the the athletic training department is one of the best, even compared to some Division One schools. Yeah. You know uh, the the attentiveness of uh, you know Miss Amanda and 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 her staff, they were like great. You know, like they really care about the players. Um, most athletic departments don't care about their players like that. And we had a very solid weight room. And, you know, like the facilities was, I was impressed. You know, uh, that was my first, um, my first impression when I, when I got to Eastern Florida State. I was like, well, this doesn't look like prison, you know. Um, and I'm fortunate, you know, to have gone to Eastern Florida State because, uh, you know, some junior college probably have that experience. But how, how do you uh, deal with, and and try to change that narrative as one of the best junior college coaches. How do you try to recruit and you know some of these high talent guys and let them know, hey, listen, this is not whatever mentality most people have instilled in them in terms of you know trying to deal with bad character and you know like um, and the the danger in junior colleges and that. How have you been able to handle that in the past? You know. The- I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, it's always a challenge because there is that perception, whether it's right or wrong, there is that perception of junior college. And there are some programs out there that don't have good facilities. There are programs out there that do have renegades. But you know what? You know this as well. There's a lot of programs like that at Division One. also. There are some Division One programs that don't have as good facilities. There are Division One programs that take renegade guys. So uh, I don't feel, at least at this you know, point in 2023, there's not a lot of difference, you know, between junior college and division one, as far as that aspect goes, you know, there's going to be renegades everywhere and there's going to be great programs everywhere. You know, we're just fortunate. We're one of the great programs. Uh, you know, we do have unbelievable facilities. Uh, we've got unbelievable, you know, and, and depth of staff, as you said, with our athletic training staff, with our coaching staff, uh, we've got a great weight room. You know, we've got, we've got a nice setup, you know, we've got a better setup than a lot of division one places, but, it's not always easy, especially recruiting players like yourself um, who have great grades, who have a perception of junior college in a, separate, in a different way. Uh, best I can do is kind of like what I did with you is just say, hey, let me show you. You know, let me show you. you know, don't don't yeah. listen to me. Mm-hmm. Let me show you. Let me show you the facilities. Let me show you how beautiful Melbourne, Florida is. Let me show you that we run our program like a, like a mid to high major Division One program. Uh, I mean, that's, yes. that's, that's the way I can do. And, you know, at least for the guys and the, and the recruits and the players that will listen, uh, they're they're very pleasantly surprised, and they obviously love their time here. You know, the one thing uh, that I'm sure you've experienced as well that does make us different, even even in my mind, better than Division One program at our level, uh, especially at our program, it can be about really caring about the student athlete. 
It can be about loving our players, caring about our players. It's not just a big business. Uh, obviously, we want to win games, but we do it because of our process. We do it because of what we do. Unlike Division One, where it seems like everybody's either just panicked to keep their contract and and win at all costs, or or so like ruthlessly Machiavellian, you know, oriented to move up in the business and win at all costs and justifies the means. And at our level, we can actually sit, you know, we can sit here and really care about our guys, you know, and, and really have a true family atmosphere. Yes. And that's not always the case at division one programs. <clears throat> yes. Yes, that's true. And, and, um, co come to, to bring up, to back up that statement, um, at, at, at Eastern Florida state, I remember you, the one, actually helping helping us set up the, the classes and yeah. choosing our class schedules and you and the staffs were overseeing study hall like that's that's very tough to do not only do you have a duty to be a coach on and off the court you also have to make sure we're in the right classes and making sure gra guys are going to graduate and making sure guys are going to study hall and it, it, it was a difficult task like because on the division one level, most coaches just focus on, you know, just team meetings and players and practice. They have a whole different staff to, to handle that. How have you been able to like balance all this, which, you know, you have a family now and you know, you have, you have a, you have two, two, uh, two children. Um, how have you been able to balance all these different pieces at once and still function yourself? <laughs> Well, you know, that's balance is always a hard thing to do, you know, just in life in general, whatever your job is, whatever your occupation, whatever your passions are, balance is always difficult. But it's something I've always strived to, you know, make make balance important, and especially as you as you alluded to. I've got two kids. I've got a four year old daughter. I've got a one year old son. And I've watched uh, coaching. You know, I, I, I don't know if you come acquaintances, but I've watched, you know, a lot of coaches have their families torn apart by this business. Uh, by being too immersed just in in the uh, basketball side and not you know and, and absolutely neglecting their family and so uh, I made sure to make promise myself and and you know when I decided to get married and then when I decided to have children uh, I wanted to make sure I have a good balance where you know the family's always going to come first you know I, I can't preach family atmosphere in our program if I don't live that just even in my personal life with my family so uh, family's always got to come first. Um, secondly, you know, my players within the program are always going to come first. Everything else will be secondary to, you know, my, my two families, you know, my, my, you know, my family here and then my family on the court and then trying to find the balance from that, you know, it, it, it falls in place better as long as you align your values first. As long as I know that when Sion Sakiki is, is at Eastern Florida, at Eastern Florida, like I've got to make sure that you are taken care of, that you are happy, that you feel loved, that you feel cared about. Uh, and then I can worry about, you know, the X's and O's. Then I can worry about the study halls. Then I can worry about the strength and conditioning program. Then I can worry about scouting reports. But it doesn't matter if you don't feel cared about, if you don't feel loved in our program, that stuff really doesn't matter, you know? And yeah. uh, so by trying to align, you know, what's important and then <laughs> I feel that's been kind of our key to making this whole thing work. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And, you know, you, your program is one of the programs that I can say to this day, like, you do a very good job keeping up with, you know, your your the, the previous players from the previous years. And you even proved that to us while, while I was there. You know, you call up guys in practice, you know, guys that play for Memphis, guys in overseas, even came over because you keep that relationship and and in in most colleges that's not the case you know like uh whenever the players are done you know you the the the, the bond is gone and um so that's that's a, a bragging moment for you know whoever decides or oh, is gonna ever go through the route of the junior college you know like eastern florida under coach jeremy schumann you will you will not um uh, you won't make a bad decision at all uh, because he's going to make sure uh, you, you're you taking care of on and off the court. And it's also a winning program. So, Coach, how were you able to turn 
that one after your first conference win ever your your first conference win that that meant the mindset you had to you know say, you know what i just had a taste of my first conference win i want to win more and more and more how are you able to maintain that discipline with different players because now in <laughs> one level in other levels you get to keep players for four years it's it's not easy when you have to rotate players one or two years. Some of these guys only have one year in JUCO because if they're D1 transfers, it's only one year. If they were coming in as freshmen, two years. But to be able to keep that winning streak for that long, rotating players every two years, it's a very difficult task. How were you able to deal with it with different, multiple guys, different guys, creating a winning culture? Well, that's a great question. I'll be honest. It, it, it's been very difficult. Uh, and then if you also throw in uh, assistant coaches, you know, we don't pay a whole lot for assistant coaches, unfortunately. And so assistant coaches are really out after, you know, one at most two years as well. So we have constant staff turnover. We have player turnover. Uh, and it, it's difficult. And now, now you throw in also the fact that we want to get in really good people. You know, we don't want to just take talented guys that are mercenaries. We don't want to take talented guys just to win games. You know, I've got to find the next, uh, I've got to find the next Silas. You know, I've got to find the next, uh, uh, you know, Jalen Warren. I've got to find the next Ahmed Ali. Like, it's difficult, you know, uh, and that, that you know, does take out both at Division One and junior college levels at number of kids, you know, from your recruiting pool. And so uh, it's difficult. Um you know, it is you got to teach the, the whole program all over again every single year. Uh, you, you can't make a whole lot of mistakes in recruiting because you don't get to grow them up over a four year period, as you talked about. But it, uh, you know, it's enjoyable, too, because it's a challenge. Like, like you never get it never gets old, you know, like because it's a new challenge every single year with new people, new coaches on the coaching staff, new players. And so every year it's like starting fresh, like we're like we've never won a championship before. At least that's how I go into it. Yeah. So every year, and that's kind yes. of how, you know, obviously you were team eight. Every team has its own identity. You know, every team's so different yep. than, than each other. I mean, your team the following year after yours, we weren't nearly as talented, you know, in team nine. And, you know, we, we had a couple yeah. of good returnees, uh, just wasn't quite the same type of team as yours. But it was fun trying to find, and we played totally different. You know, we had to adjust halfway through the season. And we still won 28 games and won the conference title and made it to the lead eight of the national tournament. So every year has its own challenges every year. You know, it just, it, it, it keeps it fresh that way. Like here we are, we just finished our season, we won 22 games again this year, you know, made it to state final four. And right now I'm having a good time. Uh, I'm sad that the season's over. Obviously that's a very tough thing as a coach having the, the finality of the season, but I'm having a fun time. I'm enjoying, you know, recruiting and trying to piece the puzzle together and, you know, trying to figure it out for next year, you know, saying, you know, what's this team going to look like? You know, what, 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 what personalities are we going to have on this team? So it, it's constantly changing, constantly evolving, but uh, it keeps you on your toes. It, it's, it's an enjoyable process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's amazing. So the region eight, which is Florida, uh, one of the most challenging, arguably the best JUCO conference in, you know, in, in the country. It's between uh, Florida and Texas, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, to compete in that region is very competitive. In fact, I will argue most junior colleges in, in Florida will be a lot of division one teams <laughs> yes, uh, just because of the talent level. Every guy that has gone through majority of the guy that's gone through the uh, Eastern Florida program has played high level basketball and done a lot of great things. And, you know, has gone to a uh, professional level and became superstars and also competing against high level caliber guys from other teams in the same region that has gone to, other conferences in the division one level and you know had tremendous legacies i mean even like root monion you know like his, his his career at his at his college uh at little rock you know who, who knew someone from eastern florida you know uh would have had that kind of accomplishment 
and that's just that's just to speak on the the level of talent that goes through junior colleges that that most people have no idea they think junior college is going to be like a cakewalk like, oh man it's junior college i'm just going to go dominant no you're going to go play against the best division one transfers best high school talents that you have no idea and it's it's very very competitive um you you were recently inducted into the hall of fame um uh hall of fame and this is just to speak regardless of any level of basketball um that anyone could have coached on, to be a hall of fame caliber coach is not something you can easily check off like that's one of the that's one of the highest of the highest achievements uh it's like it's like the crowning for for it for a coach or a player's career is to be inducted into anything hall of fame and you were recently uh, inducted into the hall of fame as a as a college coach uh which kinds of like separates you from from other coaches um it, it, it gives you that edge like look this is a testament to your achievement as a coach and the the kind of adversity you've had to deal with over the years to be able to accomplish a hall of fame uh caliber of a coaching career and how when when you had got the phone call or the message that you were going to be inducted or uh, what was your first reaction and how did you feel about it well <laughs> i was i was floored man it uh I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And, uh, I mean, you, you said it all right there. It, uh, it really is a special thing. You know, I, I don't like really talking about myself. I like talking about the program. Uh, but that's what this hall of fame deal is. It, it's, it's a testament to the program. It's a testament to, uh, you know, guys like yourself, you know, that like, I'm not here without Silas. I'm not here without Shaq. I'm not here without Ahmed. I'm not here without Kareem Bruton. And, you know, that's what's important to know. I'm not here without assistant coaches like Coach Morosco, like Coach Parks, like Coach Pittis, all the way down the road. So it's a it's a group effort to get here. Um, yes. I'm just incredibly honored to be inducted while I'm still coaching. You know, uh, someone had brought that up the other day when I was talking to him that not many coaches really get to uh, get into the Hall of Fame while they're still active. You know, most coaches get in the Hall of Fame after their career is done. Uh, uh, you know, or sometimes even after their life is done and to be able to enjoy this while, while I'm, you know, healthy, while I'm young, while I'm still coaching, uh, it's, it's special, you know, it's special, Si, you know, it really is. And, uh, you know, it's something that, that can never be taken away. And, uh, it's something that I'll, I'll always have with me. And again, it's a testament to, you know, all the unbelievable players, all the unbelievable people that I've had along this journey with me over the, over the years. Yes. Amazing. I will, I will end with this final question, coach. Um, if you were to leave a message to players that might cross paths with the junior college, uh, road, like I, like I did, I never knew I would go to junior college. You know, you never know what life throws in front of you. But I'm so grateful that I went through junior college because if I never went through junior college, I would have never known what it's all about. And I would have had that mindset of like, you know what, it's just for kids that are not smart and which is not the case. You know, it's a, it's a great institution. You have people who are very passionate about academics and stuff like that. So there are a lot of people out there that might still have their own uh, conspiracies or they look down upon junior colleges um if you were to leave uh, a message for them what what would that what that, what would that message be you know the best message i can say is uh whether it's junior college whether it's division one whether it's division two uh find a program that cares about you and and if that's at the junior college level then the juco program you're talking to is better than any division one you could ever imagine uh find a program that cares about you find uh, a coach that cares about you, find people that care about you, uh, and, and find a place where, where people invest in you. And again, it doesn't matter. There, there's not a level in the world that matters more than that. It doesn't matter. Division one, division two, JUCO, NAIA, division three, when you can be cared by people and you are truly happy, 
I'm telling you, it just, it makes the journey that much more enjoyable, no matter where you are. And as you've experienced yourself, you know, with all the highs and lows of your amazing uh, career at the division one level, your amazing career here at the Juco level. Uh, I mean, that, that happiness, you know, that, that love, that caring, I mean, that supersedes everything else. You know, it even supersedes playing time. It even supersedes, you know, what your, your what, what X's and O's or what your role, it definitely supersedes facilities. Uh, but go where you love, go where you can develop, go where you're cared for, go where you can be happy, man. Life is a, uh, life's an amazing thing, Cy. And so why not every year, every, every month, every week, every, every day, every minute of your life, why not try to get the most out of your life and, uh, really, really immerse yourself in love and caring and passion. Wow. That's amazing. You hear it right there from. Hall of Fame coach <laughs> Jeremy Schumann. That it's not Coach Jeremy Schumann anymore. It's got to be a Hall of Fame <laughs> coach Jeremy Schumann. Yeah. <clears throat> I really appreciate you uh, joining me on this on, on on the show today, Coach. And you know, uh, whenever I come down to Florida, I will be you know I will make sure to always stop by and, and say hello. Please. And um, I'm proud of what you're doing with the program and the level at which you're taking the program to. Uh, there's many more accomplishments to come your way. And and I hope, you know, uh, God gives you the, the wisdom and, and strength and patience to continue to stir the team and all the, the young men and um, that, that comes across the program and keep empowering the community uh, wherever you go. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that's, that's my prayers for you. And... <clears throat> And I will be in touch and bleed the E. <laughs> bleed the E, baby. That's always your phrase. Bleed the E. I love it. Yes, I thank you so much for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure.